This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. This is Rich Baum in Sacramento, California. And Brian Berkowitz in Long Island, New York. Ooh, Long Island, snowy Long Island, Cal- yeah. uh, California's got nothing. Got, got yeah. no snow, and it's beautiful. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been brutal out here this snow the last couple of weeks. Although I probably shouldn't complain considering where our guest today is from. But nevertheless, um, yeah, we've 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 had a rough two weeks of snow. It's. Uh, yeah been a while since we had this uh this much snow out here in new york so has it really been affecting your work uh your shooting and your schedule um it hasn't been affecting me too much i mean this time of year is just slow in general um so it hasn't really affected me the stuff i'm putting out there just has a lot of snow in it so you know it is what it is and if the stuff is is still on the market in a month when all this is melted and gone we'll go out and reshoot exteriors so it is Mm -hmm. what it is you know you know, everyone out there, whether you're, you know, in the Northeast or the Midwest, everyone deals with this, this time of year. So it's, you know, it's pretty understandable, I think. Yeah, it's gray out here in California. So we all have our, we all, we don't have the snow where I'm at, but um, if, if we had snow, I'd probably deal with it. So just, uh, guess, I guess, get over it, right? <laughs> Exactly. Get over it. Yeah. All so right, who do but, we have today, Brian? Well, What's before we on? introduce our guest, I'm yeah. going to just give a quick word from HD Photo Hub. HD Photo Hub mm-hmm. is a back office system designed just for real estate photographers. Give your clients a place to download their photos, make updates to their property websites, get flyers and social media tiles, and so much more. All on a platform that is branded to your company. Check them out today at hdphotohub.com. That's hdphotohub.com. And with that, I guess we can, you know, we, we teased that you're from up north, but we can introduce our 2020 videographer of the year from PFRE, um, Andre McKenzie. Andre, welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me, both of you. Pleasure. So, Andre, you're from Toronto up north, so you're used to this snow that, uh, that <laughs> we have here in New York all the time. But um, so... First off, before we get into it, where can people see some of your work? I mean, you, you do mainly video. Um, so I know I know most of the guests we have on here are photography related. Um, you don't do photography, you're all video? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm both. I started in this oh. niche industry um, in video. I went to school for film and animation, that kind of thing. Um, and then I just learned photography along the way as all the clients uh, kind of requested it. So I do offer f- photos as well. All right. Awesome. So where can people find you if they want to see your work before we dive into it? Um, I think the best place is probably either YouTube or Instagram. So on either platform, it's Silverhouse HD. Perfect. And we'll put a link, um, you know, to all your stuff in the content. The one cool thing I noticed about your videos when I go to YouTube is that you're shooting properties that are 5 million, 10 million, 50 million, 60 million. What was it? I, did I see a 90 million yeah, or 96? Yeah, 59. Yeah. 59. So you're doing some pretty. Not quite 60. I'm sorry, Andre. <laughs> so yeah, you're doing that's 59 Canadian, 59 million Canadian. So it's not quite 59 million American. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like can't pick and choose, but um, <laughs> 50, uh, 59 million. So you're doing some houses that are insane, insane numbers. So, you know, we, we can get into, I guess, technique and some of that stuff in a little bit, but I mean, you're dealing with the, the luxury of the luxury of the luxury, the top end of the market. How did you get into that, that niche over there, that, that high end luxury? Um, I mean, it wasn't, something I kind of was seeking out to plan to end up in that industry. Um, I guess when I first started in this uh, industry in 2006 or 2007, I can't quite remember. Um, my whole goal was to, fi- I wanted to film resorts and hotels. That's kind of how I got into this. And then um, coming out of school, um, I fell right into this uh, because my father-in-law was a, is a real estate agent and asked me to shoot a property um, back in 2007. And that's just kind of how I got into it. And uh, right off the bat, because I, I, I was taking film and animation in school, um, I kind of rented a camera from school and kind of did my thing. Um, and then, I don't know, just I guess I was on the video bandwagon kind of early. I'm not going to say um, I was one of the first because I know I definitely wasn't. Um, but I felt like um, I, ha- I had a good in with a lot of big brokerages. Um, 
offering them something different than than uh, the people in my city weren't. Um, and what and, year was that? 89, I mean, uh, ni- uh, 19, wait, uh, 2009, <laughs> you said? Yeah, 2008, yeah. 2009? Yeah, the first property I ever shot was probably 2007. Um, and then it was as early. business grew, yeah, I guess mm-hmm. it was, yeah. As business grew, um, it kind of, a video kind of opened the door for me uh, with a lot of the brokerages. And I was able to kind of fall into the luxury uh, area. Yeah, I sort of wonder if, if just being around for so long just helped you, helped catapult you into that luxury market because you were doing this before, like you said, not not the first, but you were doing this before most other people were even getting into video. So you've been around for so long that you just kind of made your ranks up through the uh, all the different markets. Yeah, I mean, that's all I can attribute it to, really. And uh I mean, hopefully my work is as great as the, the people who hire me think. And then uh, I kind of get referrals from there. And the, pop- the property price point just kept on growing and growing um, until I hit that $59 million property. And I don't think I'll, pro- I'll be able to top that one, but uh, we can always aim for it. Hey, you never know. I, sh- I shot a, my most expensive is a $100 million property. And it was, wow. it didn't sell though. And it was an island with six houses. It was like a private island off the North Shore on Long Island. Um, but you had me beat because your property sold, mine didn't. So maybe you're doing so I, something better than I am. Well, I recently found out it sold privately. So um, I don't know the, the exact details, but I don't know. I found out from another agent. Cool stuff. Yeah. What were you about to say? Rich? I'm just I'm just sitting back going ninety million dollars, hundred million dollars. Oh my gosh, because I I mean I do I do two three million dollar places, so it's just chicken feed, man. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, that was a rare exception. I don't I don't yeah. I don't consistently shoot that type of property, but well, Andre, do you shoot? Um, what is your lowest? I mean, do you shoot? Um, you know, standard run of the mill real estate listings. Yeah, of course. I shoot. That's probably mm-hmm. the bread and butter of, of yeah. my business. Um, it's it's not always what I post on social media, of course, because it's not the most glamorous, doesn't get the most eyeballs. Um, but I mean, I'm shooting uh, 400 square foot condos all the time. Um, small little bachelor. So when you're shooting, who's what's your setup? Who do you have with you? And and what are you doing? And how long does it take you? And what's a typical shoot? Or maybe not uh, maybe not a condo, but like a like a million dollar seven hundred thousand dollar house, a thirty five hundred square foot house. What do you have? Yeah. Um, so I usually book about two hours to do that shoot. Uh, usually, um, the agents that hire me um, usually book photos and video um, because I do I do decent photos. I don't do amazing spectacular photos, but uh, they're very uh, good for uh, the real estate um, uh, usage. Um, and so I'll go through the property. Um, I usually start with photos, um, so I can kind of nail down my composition in each room. Uh, and that kind of helps me figure out where I need to stand and where, where I need to be in the room when I'm doing the video so that I'm, I'm that much faster when I'm doing the video. Mm -hmm. Um, so photos, I will usually spend about an hour or so. Uh, and and I, I play around, like I, I, I love what I do and I don't always just go in with the mindset of, Oh, I need to capture two or three pictures of the living room as quick as I can and move on to the next. I, I like to be a little bit creative and try to push myself to be a little bit better with my composition and, uh, and everything that, that goes into it. Um, and then uh, after my photos are done, I usually switch over to video. Um, I'm shooting on a, on a gimbal. My camera is the, it's, it's a little bit older uh, body. It's a Sony a7S II uh, with a 1635 um, 2.8 uh, G Master Sony lens. And I recently picked up the um, the Ronin R- RS2, I believe it's called, which has been a fantastic gimbal because I used to have the original uh, Zion crane, which is pretty old and it's very um, fragile, if I may say. It, it's very small, uh, whereas th- these ones now are, are, ri- are rugged and, and super solid. So you got... Big ass arms, right? You got deep. <laughs> I got a really sore back. That's <laughs> <laughs> really sore back. Yeah, yeah. And um, so you're you're taking a couple hours to do these videos, and you're also doing how long does it take you to shoot the house for your uh, still photos? So you're doing like an, an hour, hour and a half to shoot your stills. Yeah, I, I tend to be an yeah an hour, an hour and a half at about thirty mm-hmm. five hundred square feet. Um, and just because I can do that, that, that kind of walk around and kind of wrap my, my brain around the space in the photos yeah. when I'm, when I'm doing the video, it's kind of, it, it's very quick. It's a lot quicker. It's like 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. 
Yeah, because I already know the composition. I'm really just uh, changing the camera settings per uh, the room and lighting conditions and color. Um, and then I'm just banging out shots as fast as I can. Well, stuff. Yeah, I wanna. I mean, the, the point you made, which I kind of we just kind of moved on from, but that's a really interesting point. And actually, I never realized that I was doing it consciously until last week, believe it or not. Where taking photos first and finding your compositions and sort of replicate them in the video. And um, I, you know, I had a situation similar last week where I was doing a commercial real estate job, photo and video, and. I noticed myself and I never noticed myself doing it before that I kept going back to the same exact positions that I was shot the photo in. And I'm like, you know, it, I don't know why I never noticed it, but yeah, it, it changes everything. And it actually gives a cool look to your video because everything is almost composed for photo. It's so it's an interesting, I found myself doing a lot more one points even from a video standpoint versus angle shots and stuff like that. So it's a pretty interesting take on it. Yeah, I mean, I want to jump in there because I, I do I edit for a bunch of other video uh, video shoot real estate video shooters all, all across. Um, I mean, the world, a, a couple of people in Australia, a couple of people in North America. Um, and the one thing is that they're primarily photographers who are picking up video. Um, and w that's the one thing I always see. I always see their photos are amazing and the composition's amazing and it's bang on. But on the video side, it's like they kind of forgot about the composition. But I guess it is a little overwhelming because there's a lot of aspects to video to, to remember and take into account. You're operating this gimbal with all these buttons. Um, so maybe the composition kind of slips sometimes. But for me, yeah, shooting the photos first and nailing that composition in my mind, I kind of know how to shoot that room to show it off the best. It just it makes the video uh, part of it so easy for me. Yeah, but I think when I shoot, uh, sorry, when, when I'm shooting twilight shots, I like to get there early and I will often shoot uh, a shot of the front of the house and it's not going to, it's, I might use it, but I'm probably not, but it's just going to give me an idea of where I need to be when crunch time comes so I can recreate that. And I have it in my head. Same thing with three sixties. Once I do the house, I then have set up all the lights. I've opened up all the doors, whatever I need to do my three sixties. And I get in there and it's just so fast, so easy. Yeah, sort of like the pre-production work. Yeah. Cool. And you you edit obviously you edit your own stuff and now you edit for other people as well. So what's the editing process process like? You know, on a on an average two to three minute real estate video. I mean, you're talking about half a day of editing, a day. Where, where are you at? And what um, what do you edit on for people who might be interested in in, in editing? Take, yeah. yeah. Um, so my workflow. I, I mean, I'm an, an old school Adobe guy, um, just from back in like high school. I probably was mm -hmm. working with Photoshop three or four back then. Um, but uh, my whole workflow is Adobe. Um, I subscri subscri subscribe to the uh, Adobe Cloud uh, group of softwares and I'm uh, editing with uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, a typical house, um, I, I, I did a, a, lately a screen recording of my edit because another uh, video, uh, video shooter wanted to see how I edit. Um, so I did a little screen recording of my edit and uh, it was a, I think about a 2000 square foot condo and it was about 32 minutes um, to do the edit to music, um, but not with, uh, not including color grading or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a fairly quick process. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the style that I edit at, so, so I, I offer a different, a couple of different styles of editing per different price points. And if somebody wants a more unique video or if there's a more unique property, I kind of put a little bit more effort into it. But if we're talking like the bread and butter stuff, um, my premiere files are all templated. Uh, I kind of cut to the beat uh, to make uh, life simple um, for your, for your run of the mill properties. I also uh, think it flows better when you cut to the beat. Yeah, I think visually, um, uh, us being creative people, we might want to see something a little bit more dynamic and interesting. Um, that's not cut to the beat like a music video. I get that whole thing. But the average consumer out there um, just, yeah, it flows better and it feels more natural when it cuts to the beat and, and switches and helps with the transitions in the video. Awesome. So um, let's, uh, I guess, shift gears a little bit. I mean, you were a speaker at the recent PFRE. Um, what was that like? What was your topic on? So my topic um, for the PFRE conference. And how do you even get involved in that, for that matter? Um, to be honest, I I don't know. Brandon uh, reached out to me just one time. Um, uh, I mean, he's he's in Alberta or Saskatchewan. I mean, he's in Canada, 
Um, so I've, I've talked to him here and there. I kind of introduced myself when he took over from Larry a couple of years ago, however long that was. Um, and it, it, I don't know, maybe he, he, he knew that I shoot video. He knew I was in Toronto in the same city. And I kind of, I always reached out to him and said, like, if there's anything ever, um, any, any opportunities to ever get involved in PFRE or help out as a contributor or whatnot, just let me know. And I guess being in front of him a couple of times during the year kind of uh, made him remember me. Cool. And what was, I mean, was your, I think your topic was video for beginners or getting into real estate video. So yeah, do you, you just covered basically gear, stuff like that. Is that? Yeah. So the topic was, it was video for photographers looking to get into, uh, looking to add video to their repertoire of services. Um, so I kind of skipped over all the, 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 the kind of basic camera settings. Um, I, I touched on um, a little bit on how I handle um, ISO and white balance and uh, my aperture in different settings indoors because sometimes that's a little bit uh, different than photography and you gotta you kind of have to do some different techniques because you're working with natural light and stuff like that um, as opposed to flash photography with uh, in, in, in photos. Um, and then I got into, um, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember this was back in November. Um, haven't kind of reviewed it since then, but I got into, um, I think it was five or 10 different, uh, tips and tricks, uh, that people can do to get started, uh, and how to get started. And I covered some of my basic, uh, gimbal moves. I think there was five or six, um, gimbal moves that are my go-to, uh, for any different type of scenario. So exteriors or interiors. And, um, yeah, I covered a little bit on gear, what to bring, um, but not so much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ninja walk. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. Hey, eh? the ninja walk. <laughs> I'm I'm the worst for the ninja walk. I don't do the ninja walk. <laughs> that's great. Well, listen, let me jump in here and just say I want to uh, do a little read for our sponsor, iGuide. iGuide is a turnkey solution for those looking to expand the real estate photography business beyond photography to add three D tours laser accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans. Get your first five standard eye guides free by adding the code shooting spaces in the referral section at camera purchase. Um, if visit, oh, please visit goeyeguide.com to learn more. That's goeyeguide.com. Okay. So the ninja walk, let's go back to the ninja walk. I, I, is it not as important as, as everybody makes it out to, to seem, or is there just different degrees of ninja walk or smooth walking? Explain what that is or what you so do. So I guess, uh, I mean, I don't do it, so I don't pay attention to, <laughs> to it that much. But I guess um, if I were to draw upon like a past experience, uh, before I even owned a camera, um, I was renting a camera from school. It's kind of when I got started. Um, and I always wanted to do a steady cam sort of walk through TV style uh, video. And, and at the time I was shooting on a tripod and slider. So my movements were kind of limited. So I hired somebody else I knew who was in film, who owned the, the big TV steady cam rig. Um, and he would do the ninja walk. He would have uh, like hiking shoes or something uh, really firm that could hold his ankle really tight. And he would wear them indoors and do this silent Michael Jackson sort of like, floating walk um even though his his rig that he was on uh did a really good job but um yeah. i guess doing the ninja walk uh pre warp stabilizer inside of premiere um was kind of your only go-to to make sure that your footage was super sta su super steady and super smooth yeah i used to work on motion pictures um back in the day and when when uh, steadicam first came out which is actually back in the 70s uh, that's the 1970s. But uh, I used to work with the, the best in the business, the top uh, Steadicam operators where they have... Gavin Brown, Panaflex. is that his name? What's Gavin, his name? Gavin Brown. Isn't he the guy who invented Steadicam? Ga uh, that probably is. Actually, yeah. my old girlfriend used to work for them. And uh, I remember when I was a little kid watching... Um, Sunday morning TV shows, and they did a special on, on uh, Steadicam. But um, they would put on a full-size Panaflex camera, and uh, we're, we're talking pretty big. And these Steadicam guys were badass. They would have 
uh, they would put, wear special clothes and have on knee pads and they would just absolutely wear sweatbands. And, and uh, it was a big deal. And it, it's completely different. I mean, the, the whole business has changed with uh, going out going into uh, into uh, DSLRs and, and then mirrorless. But uh, boy, it was a big deal back in the day. And how long have you been uh, doing? What was your first gimbal? What was your first uh, isolation device? My, my first gimbal was a makeshift DIY metal rod with some weights on um, the bottom. Weights on the bottom. I guess I was trying to copy the I can. Yeah, yeah, that that gimbal gimbal from from a while back. Um, yeah, it was a total hack job. I, when I look at that video, it is <laughs> horrendous. It is the worst thing. I would never let anybody else see that. But you know, it's funny. I, you know, I used to actually own a steady cam when I used to do, you know, commercial video production and I was, I was licensed through Tiffin as an operator and I can't even imagine this thing was massive. I can't even imagine bringing that on a real estate shoot. And when you say like one of your buddies did and brought in a steady cam on, I mean, footage probably looked incredible. But like the thing is massive with the vest and the arm. And it, it, it's just, when I used to do weddings, we actually used to bring that on weddings, which looking back now is is insane. I can't believe we did that. But um, yeah, I can't even imagine bringing that on a, on a real estate shoot. It's crazy, especially now with the stuff that's, you know, the DJI stuff, which is so good and, and so affordable and so small. Yeah, I, I remember I would always go with him and I would have my hand on his back. So when he's backing up, we don't back up into a vase or, or anything like that. And yeah, that, I mean, it's a cumbersome piece of uh, equipment. So it's the way it was. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Garrett Brown, I should say, not Gavin. So mm -hmm. Garrett, yeah. if you're listening yeah. to our podcast, I apologize. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's on there in age if he's still alive. So yeah, yeah. I met, I met him when I, when I was in film school, he actually came to, to a uh, class, um, as the inventor of Steadicam to talk to talk to us. It was pretty neat. And he also invented that um that little camera that they use in the football games or the arenas that flies over the crowd and on top, like right on top of, for instance, when the you know football play is about to happen. Cable cam. Cable cam. He invented that too. Oh. So it's pretty uh pretty crazy. Yeah. Guy knew what he was doing as far as gravity. <laughs> And Andre, um, uh, any tips for for people that are getting into this um, or want to? Um, I went last year. I, I it was funny when when we were in, in uh, 2019. Uh, we did PFRE. The first thing I was ready to do in 2020 last year was to um, get into video because, and I never wanted to get into video because I was in the motion picture industry for 30 years. And I just didn't want to do that. I like still images and that was fine. But I had an agent that said, oh, we're going to do, we're going to do videos on every single listing. So I said, great. So the first part of 2020 last year, I bought a uh, Weeble S and I had my uh, a7 threes. I had the right lenses and then I bought a monitor and I was all set. I was actually kind of fun setting it up with little little grips and things like that but um we, we she got the sticker shock my agent got the sticker shock of how much videos cost and um we we didn't really go in that direction so i could use any advice that you have but uh, what would you say to somebody that wants to add um add video into their um repertoire as you said um for me i mean i understand how important um the photography is, but I mean, 2021, everyone's, they're all, most of the agents, most of the agents who are moving properties are adding either Matterport or video uh, in combination with, with the photos. Um, anybody today I shot video and Matterport didn't even do photos. Oh, wow. Yeah. First are time they, ever. Are they pulling, are you going to pull stills from the Matterport? No, right they, they said, we're just going to push it on social media, just video. But, I mean, I'm well, not going to question them, but. So yeah. we had, sorry for interrupting. No um, I, I always think if, if you have a, if you have a camera, if you have a DSLR camera, why not add video um, to your, to your services? And I get the learning curve uh, for video in my mind. It, it's steeper than photography because you have that whole um, editing aspect, which is, uh, I mean, shooting is only half the game. You have to edit that video and, and, and publish it and export it and upload it and, uh, color grade and all these different aspects. Um, but for anybody getting started, I mean, if your camera records video, 
um, switch it over, um, maybe pick up a used gimbal or something like that if you can, uh, and, and practice on your own house. The easiest thing to do is to basically replicate the composition that you, you would shoot in your phot photography. Um, do a quick YouTube search, uh, just quickly understand uh, how far you can push your ISO and aperture and stuff like that before you start degrading your image uh, because the videos aren't raw images like they are in photography. Um, and, and hop on YouTube again and do a quick editing tutorial. There's uh, iMovie tutorials, um, Adobe Premiere tutorials, which are very easy and kind of straightforward. You can get royalty-free music kind of easily today um, as something you want to use. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to say. What about you? Are you doing, um, are you, have you done or are you planning to do a video tutorial for, for people? Yeah, so that's kind of in the works. Um, and it's something I was kind of promoting at PFRE. Um, I thought I had all this time and I thought COVID was on the way out. Um, and that I would be able to have properties to shoot on location, uh, my course. <laughs> um, I have the second half of my course all done, which is editing, how to edit. Uh, but the first half on how to shoot, um, I did a bunch of stuff uh, just sitting here at my desk. Uh, but it's not the same as being out in a real property um, and, and, shoot, and having somebody shoot me shoot while I explain uh, what's going on. Um, but I do have a course coming out. Um, the date exactly, I'm not sure when. Uh, but my whole plan and idea was to shoot four different styles of properties, um, like a condo, a townhouse, maybe an average size um, detached, like 3,500 square feet, and then maybe a luxury. Uh, because I know there's some real estate video courses that are out there that have just luxury homes, and not everybody falls into that category um, in North America and in Europe. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you, um, you also fly drones, right? So I flew, I, I've been flying a drone since the phantom two mm -hmm. um and i i got up to the phantom four and then i got into a little sticky area where i wasn't supposed to be flying uh this was pre all pre um so i'm not sure what the regulations are down there but this is all pre drone regulations um across north america i was flying um and then when they kind of came into effect i said like you know what i i, I have the business to run i have all these other things to do booking shoots shooting videos photos and editing, let me just outsource my, my drone work to a licensed pilot who has insurance. And um, that's how I kind of do it from there. I stopped shooting. I, although I love drones, I'll, I would shoot every day with the drone if I could. And you're, you, you're in Canada, so you have different uh, regulations than we do in the US. More strict, right? I think they're more strict, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I'd have to ask my drone guy, I don't even pay attention. But yeah. you use it, I mean, weather aside, you use drones for most of your videos, correct? Um, when they're a sizable property or, or a farm or something with, uh, with a decent amount of land. Um, yeah, I always like to incorporate drones. I always try to sell it, um, to properties that aren't in like a downtown, uh, heavy populated area, but yeah, for sure. Cool. Now I know we're, we're talking about video and, you know, your videographer of the year and all that, but I'm looking at your Instagram and your still image stuff is, is pretty damn good too. Thanks, man. Thanks. I shoot HDR. Um, I'm, I haven't, I don't know. It's like my brain. Uh oh, don't tell that. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Why is that? <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. I've, I've, I've mellowed out this year. HDRs. It's like my brain doesn't have the capacity to take on learning flash photography and also wanting to push my video uh, business more. And this year I kind of, I'm kind of digging deeper in the video uh, land. Uh, because I, I, I figured like my YouTube, I'm at about 41,000 subscribers. So there's something there. So I just want to double down on it. Uh -oh, you guys can have a little challenge over there. <laughs> What's that? Well, Rich is also like, what are you like 35, 40? Nice. <laughs> well, I'll tell you though, I'm on your Instagram page and you know, and I will say that, that, uh, a lot of it is um, you have beautiful properties to photograph and people need to understand that the, the um, newer photographers that are out there shooting two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar houses got to understand, you know, it's like, it's like shooting a, a gorgeous bride or, or a, an okay bride. So that's what it is, but no, your work is, is wonderful. And uh, it, it, though it is, is, obviously a lot to do with your subject and you have just some wonderful opportunities 
so if anybody hasn't uh, checked out the uh, Instagram page, tell us wh what is your Instagram? How can people find that? Yeah, so it'll be at Silverhouse HD. And please follow so me because I need to break 3,000 <laughs> followers. <laughs> so that's Instagram.com forward slash Silverhouse HD. And I urge everybody to check it out because it's really great. And I notice you really like single point compositions. And I think that's great. And and when they're appropriate and when you, you get an opportunity to do a good single point, that's the go-to ticket. What do you what do you think? What do you like in your shots? I, 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 I'm, I'm a fan of symmetrical uh, composition mm -hmm. and, and especially when you get these nice properties that are decorated and either staged or have the right furniture. Um, the single point to me, it, well, when the room speak, like it, it just speaks to me when the room kind of shows it off and the furniture is set up that way. And uh, yeah, it's an easy you know, spot to get. <laughs> it's funny when I started getting into a, a, into single points and, and for people out there that don't know a single point, is just a straight on composition and you don't want to just go off a little bit. If you're not going to do a single point straight on, go further off to a uh, an angle shot. But um, I think they're great. And the problem is it's like a, a tilt shift lens. When you get a new tilt shift, you you go way too high and shift to it down too far. But when you're doing a single point, you do too many single point images because they're just so magical. So you kind of get to that point where you, you really have to find that medium between um, when you're doing them too much and when it's just appropriate. But uh, you well, certainly- I, th I think there's also the a composition. Yeah, there's, I think there's a comfort level with the single points too, because when you walk into a room, any room, usually you're viewing it at a very similar angle to that one point composition. I mean, I don't know anybody who will walk into a living room and go to the corner and look at it and see how it looks. You know, you walk into a room and usually you're viewing a room in the one, one point. So I feel like that just resonates most comfortably with people because that's how they're used to viewing any room or house when they walk into it. Well, I'm, I'm with you, Andre, though. It's, it's, it's all about symmetrics. And uh, it's actually hard for me to do a, a single point that is not quite symmetric, but it's still a single point and appropriate. So I got to think outside the box. But I, uh, I, I mean, you've got to have the bar stools right. You got to have the chairs perfectly uh, symmetrical. And do you, when you're shooting images, uh, still images, do you, are, you, um, are you tethered? So you can see what you're doing and you, how you can move your furniture around? No, no, I'm not tethered. Mm -hmm. no. Why not? I don't know. It just it takes too long. So much work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, tethered to the iPad is not, I mean, it's not so crazy. So you just, you use the back of the LCD for everything? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I mean, if you're, if you're shooting brackets, it makes things a little bit easier because you're not as concerned with the lights that your flash is putting out and all that stuff. So, it, you know, a lot of times when, if I'm on a commercial real estate job where all I do is bracket, um, if it's a really small, you know, 1500 square foot office space where I'll be in and out in literally five, 10 minutes, I might not even bother to set up the camera range or an iPad because my setup time might be more than my actual shoot. So mm -hmm. I might just run in, pop a lens on and just bang off a couple of quick shots. So. So, so Andre, um, you're doing HDR and what are you doing? Five brackets? What do you, what do you, I experimented shoot? with five one and stop I just, apart. Um, so I'm doing plus negative three, mm -hmm. uh, at three brackets. Um, mm -hmm. one stop, uh, plus negative three brackets, uh, yeah. one stop apart. Uh -huh. Yeah. And who do you, uh, are you editing yourself? Are you outsourcing or what are you doing there? Um, I, I, so I try to edit as much as I can. Um, my more of my time for editing goes towards uh, the, the videos, uh, just because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm trying to double down, trying to give my my YouTube uh, peeps some more content. Uh, but I recently started outsourcing some of the work because, uh, I mean, shooting two properties a day plus Twilight's sometimes video and photos is just a little bit hard to turn around by the next day or next next two days. And what are much. you using? What are you, you what are you using for your HDR? What what program? Or what are you doing? What's your process? Um, so when I used to edit, uh, my process was through uh, Lightroom, and then um, I used to merge them with um, Infuse, mm -hmm. and then I would um, yeah, and then I would uh, re retouch up the uh, the merged Infused photo. Mm. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking at your Instagram page and. 
you seem to have the luxury, and I'm sure this isn't the uh, the real story, but you seem to have the luxury of nice white places, and that is just <laughs> the 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 t- cat's meow, man. That's well, great. I mean, I would tell you, there's a story behind that. So I recently hired. Uh... <laughs> you only do white out. You ask no. your agent, you say, hey, if it's not white, I don't do yeah, it. Yeah, I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I recently hired a social me- some social media help. And uh, the advice I got um, was to have have like a, a theme going on the feed, so that everybody when they're scrolling they, they have this uh, visual experience on the feed, and so that you'll see, you'll see there's a clear start to the all white rooms. And just recently, when I stopped using them, there's a clear finish to the all white rooms because they weren't the best photos. Um, they were just photos that kind of met the color aspect. We're Thanks. all pretty freaking good. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Not too shabby. And it's interesting when Tony Colangelo talks about branding um, and getting your website, he, he talks about the, the, the mental, the, um, the stimulus to, to doing certain things with um, your website. And you only want to have so many images or, you know, I can't really go into it, but, you know, the, the mentality or the, the theory behind um, how to get people to really latch on to your photos. Did, is that what your person helped you with and, and talked about? I, I guess. I mean, I, I've been so busy. I, I have a two-year-old toddler who've been trying to potty train and all that and get we're just getting over Christmas and putting all the stuff away and, and we're renovating our house that we're living in. So I kind of delegated the social media stuff and just, just said, if you know what you're doing, just help me grow a little bit. <laughs> oh, so she does the whole thing. The, the um, social media. Yeah, I mean, it was just uh, mainly Instagram and kind of managing the, the comments mm-hmm. on the YouTube and stuff like that. But uh, I kind of gave them a, a number of properties, a couple hundred properties that I've shot. And I just said, oh, just dig through these and pick out some good mm-hmm. photos. And it, I didn't realize it was all white photos until a buddy of mine said, like, hey, do you only shoot photos of white rooms? <laughs> just but, beautiful. Just okay. wonderful. I'll take it. Yeah, so if anybody wants to really see, a, get a good inspiration on shots, Go check out the Instagram. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Andre, we're running low on time. So um, we want to thank you for coming on, talking a little bit about your process, a little bit about your work, giving people an opportunity to learn a little bit about you and what you do. And, you know, I think, you know, in the community, this is just the beginning because, you know, a photographer of the year and now video is becoming more and more prevalent all over the place. So um, I think people who haven't heard about you now will, will definitely know about you and, you know, I want to advise everyone to go check out your work on YouTube because some of these properties are just absolutely insane, especially that $59 million one, which I watched earlier today. That, that's the one I'm hoping that they don't make me take down because it's sold. So if you're going to watch it, watch it soon. <laughs> just change I, the I name, no just change the title of the video. I'm, I'm going to try put and on sell 25 that, yeah. million. So no one knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one will find it. That, that, that is the secret of what I try to do when they want a video taken down of a property. I just say, it's still my work. So I take off any um, addresses off the property, off the videos. Uh, yeah, just super that images, like super, it. super images, strong images, oh but, but such beautiful properties. Oh my gosh. You're so, Thanks, guys. I will say you're so lucky. Oh my gosh. I wish <laughs> I had that here <laughs> <laughs> in wonderful Sacramento, California. Now we could, we could, we use, a, we could use a little bit of uh, class and, and styling in our, in our, in our uh, houses, our listings, but thank you for coming on. Huh? Great time. Great to chat with you guys. Just great mm-hmm. to chat with people in the industry. Oh yeah, for sure. So as we wrap up, I'm going to just uh, say a little word from photo up. Are you sick of having multiple accounts, logins, and bills from all your different service providers with photo up the industry's top rated photo editing company. You can now have everything you need under one roof from editing from photo editing and virtual staging to property websites and photo delivery. They've got real estate photographers covered. They even help you hire a virtual assistant starting at under $7 an hour. PhotoUp is the one-stop shop that helps you run, manage, and grow your real estate photography business in one central location. Head over to photoup.net slash shooting spaces for a special discount on your first full month of editing and access to their real estate marketing tools. With every account, you'll also get two free single property websites per month. That's photoup.net slash shooting spaces, or click the PhotoUp link on the shooting spaces website. Good company. That's a mouthful. Oh, that is. That's a mouthful. (laughs) 
Cool. So again, Andre, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Um, what else we got going on, Rich? We got the webinar coming up in a couple of weeks. We do the photo critique webinar with that. I guess we can we can talk about it now. When is it? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's Wayne Capelli and Tony Colangelo are going to be. Uh, we're, we're. You can submit your photos and uh, have them both critique your images. And we're trying to get everybody from the top photographers down to new photographers, so you can learn and and uh, we will do it incognito, so you're, nobody will know who it's your photo. But you can get some great feedback on uh, your photos and the uh, composition because of all all I learned at PFRE. Uh, in Vegas was uh, I want to do better composition, right, Andre? And it's all about composition. And, yeah. Uh, well, what I think about what's great about the Tony and Wayne combo is that you know Tony's the composition guru, and you know Wayne Wayne is the guy of lighting. You know, all about lighting. So with the light farming and all that. So between the two of them, you'll get a nice um, full scope of of critique on all the images, from composition to lighting, and even. Uh, I guess we'll dive into some staging and some other things. So yeah. it's going to be fun. So shootingspaces.net slash photo critique. Go register March 4th. It should be fun. And it'll be uh, all the information for that will be in our show notes. Uh, Andre, your information will be in our show notes. And by the way, you've got a great little background. You have a little great little set going on. Yeah, that's, does that's it nice. look as nice as it does in reality? Or does it just look like if you look the, a foot off to the right or left, it looks yeah. like garbage? Yeah, yeah have, there's uh, wires and cameras and everything. <laughs> no, it looks sweet, man. You're, Thanks, you're, man. That's all you I need. Commend you. Well, yeah. I, I, this spring, I'm building an office in my detached garage, so I want to build a nice little set. So, not everyone has to look at my stupid fish poster in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. And the Stephen King movie, you know, Come exactly. On. How great is that? Well, thank yeah. you so much for coming on. And I want to just say, please, if you are out there and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Do that. It's really important. And you'll hear all of our, our upcoming podcasts. And please uh, enjoy um, our website, shootingspaces.net, where we have all our the presets and we have all our webinars. And that's where um, all the educational things are there. And uh, Brian, what about, but ask the guys, what your people do? Send them in. Yeah. I mean, we, we That's have, question. we have, uh, I think only one more episode after this one. So I'm not sure if we're going to uh -huh. get to it this season, but we will please get to it though. don't let that hold you yeah. back from submitting some ask the guys, mm -hmm. um, because we're going to start the new season up and again, a couple of weeks after we finish and we need some, uh, some questions to answer. So send some video questions. Maybe we'll have Andre on to answer them. Yeah. And if you'll come back. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> be be safe and and go out there and shoot and go go really go out there and shoot some spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net. <laughs>